I traveled to Conroe, Texas this weekend for Donald Trump's rally to speak to some of his supporters. Here's how it went. As I just mentioned, I went to Conroe, Texas, where Donald Trump was holding a rally. We looked at the clips of his speech yesterday, and now it's time to look at the on the ground interviews I was able to do. I wanna quickly shout out the David Pakman show because I went as his correspondent and I appreciate all of his support. And I'll also say before we watch the first one, this is not a, hey, let's laugh at Trump supporters, make fun of them. This is actual serious stuff I wanna talk about because I only probably talked to six or eight people and of those, two of them were very notable. And so this just shows you, this is actually a pretty good sample of the type of people that go to the Trump rally. Obviously one of them is kind of completely off the deep end, but one of the guys seemed really reasonable. We had a good conversation except for whenever he said that he was at January 6th at the Capitol. And so this really isn't supposed to be a segment of like, hey, let's pluck the craziest bit out of this long series of interviews and make out Trump supporters to be something that they're not. This is me recognizing that there is some seriously concerning behavior and a slide to negative radicalism because of course, I think there can be positive radicalism. I think you can have a radical movement for love and a radical movement for positive change and all those types of things. But this is a negative slide towards radical violent behavior. So let's go ahead and look at the first clip. I talked to this guy, like I mentioned, he seemed very reasonable, but then he had said that he was at January 6th. So I asked if he had gone to the Capitol and he said, I did. It was a great day until the end. Let's take a look. So you're here at the Trump rally? What are you hoping to hear from him when he gets on stage? You know, I just wanna, I hope we have a plan to get this, uh, get our republic back. That's what I'm here for. I'm trying to find my son. He's in this big crowd here. We were uh, in Washington on January 6th with two million patriots. And I'm happy to be here. I walked about three miles to get to this field. Dang, tell me you didn't. Go from the Ladies rally to the Capitol. The Lieutenant uh, Governor I did. of Texas, okay. Dan Patrick. To the Capitol? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. No, it was uh, it was a it was a great day until the end. <laughs> For yeah, sure. probably two million so after the rally, I showed the clips to a lot of family and friends. And the sense that we all kind of got was that this guy probably was at the rally on January 6th and then walked to the Capitol because that's what everyone's doing. But him and his son, I can't imagine went inside the Capitol and were the people assaulting the police and that type of stuff. Just based on the way that he talked about it, both in that clip and then also outside the clip off camera, he definitely came off as someone who didn't like the ending. And by the ending, of course, I just mean once they started attacking the Capitol. And then also on camera, not in that clip though, he said, we need a movement to take back our country non-violently. And then he repeated that multiple times, non-violently. And of course that could be just him covering his tracks, but I think you can watch that video and tell he doesn't come off as a kind of crazy person. So that's just the sense that I got from him as someone who's a victim of misinformation, but knows where the line is, doesn't think he should be violent. But still, I think there's a lot of people like that in the MAGA movement who really need to pull their heads out of the misinformation bubble and need to to start advocating against the type of values that Trump is espousing. Because if the somewhat sane but misguided people aren't able to eventually pull out of this movement, then there's really no hope in my mind to stop the direction that MAGA is going. Because as you'll see with the guy in the next clip I'm gonna show you, there are a lot of people who are just completely in, they're too far gone, there's no chance to pull them out of it. And so our only hope is to deprogram a lot of these people who are generally reasonable, but just believe a lot of the stuff that Trump is saying. And then I think the movement would be small enough to where it wouldn't pose a threat to America like it currently does. So anyways, that's how I felt after interviewing that guy was, please get out of this because you seem like a generally okay dude. And I really hope we can convince those types of people to pull away from Trump and pull away from this dangerous movement. All right, so moving on. I decided for this video, I just wanted to focus on these two Two clips because I think they reveal the most about the concerning elements of these supporters. And the second one I would say is the most concerning and disturbing because the guy was walking around the rally holding a sign that said, execute Pence for treason, which it's something that I honestly saw and wasn't stunned by. But then I thought about it and was thinking, this is a politician's speech. It's a politician's rally. And people are just openly calling for the execution of the former vice president, who was the vice president under that same politician who's speaking. I mean, it's just crazy. That is not something that should be happening in a typical, healthy political environment. 
All right, so in the clip I'm about to show you, just take note of a few different things. The first is how much he believes the things that he's saying. Like, I think there's some people who kind of prefer to live in this non-reality because it's easier. It avoids some cognitive dissonance and it allows them to dislike the people that they kind of intuitively just want to dislike. But in a lot of these interviews, they would say, that's just my opinion. I mean, you can have your own, uh, I don't know, this might not be right. And it seemed like they kind of knew it was a little unsubstantiated and a little bit out there, but they just kind of preferred to have that opinion. But then there's people like this guy who he would die on the hill of every single one of his opinions. And that's super scary. The second thing I want you to take note of is a conversation that's been going on a lot among progressives right now is if they believe that Mike Pence could have overturned the election this time, then who's to say Kamala couldn't just overturn the next election if Biden were to lose or whatever. And so I made a point because he was so mad at Mike Pence for not overturning the election to ask him, well, then why can't Kamala do it next time? And he kind of went, oh, because she's not the legitimate vice president. So then I flipped it back and said, okay, but if he had the power, now she is the vice president, even if you think it was illegitimate. So doesn't she now have the power to overturn an election? And then he kind of said, oh, well, I, I don't know the details and I'm not a lawyer, so, but no, definitely not. And finally, the third thing I want you to take note of in this video is I was talking to him kind of thinking, okay, I found the person with the craziest views at this rally, but then a whole group of four people walked up, two guys that looked about my age, and they were going, yeah, execute Obama and Clinton in the public square. And then it looked like their mom went, hey, can we get a chant going? Hang Mike Pence, like very, very disturbing, borderline illegal calls for violence. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the clip. Can you explain why he should be executed? Uh, he could have stopped it. He could have stopped it. Stop what? The fraudulent Kanye overtake. By, yeah, by yeah, how? Yeah, like, yeah. tell me technically how. Well, Trump got more votes than any candidate of any election in history. How many votes? Uh, depends on what state you're talking about. I mean, like... Oh, the total? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 70, which. but he got more votes than any other president, except for how many votes Biden got, right? Uh, well, Trump went to bed before midnight, or right at midnight, with a victory. Let's say January 6th, you know, Pence is sitting there. What would he have done to keep the election from being uh, <laughs> certified? Well, he's the vice president. He could have been this, the, the last vote to prevent it from... And he could just prevent it. He didn't but, prevent it. He didn't vote. He could have. So he's a straight up traitor. Uh, and that's the only... Say, let's say this... 2024, Trump runs against Biden, and uh, Trump wins. I don't think there's going to be another election. Or let's just say if there was. Could Kamala, as vice president, just not allow the election to move forward? Could she keep the certification from happening? No, because she's not the, the legitimate vice president. And neither is Biden. I'm, I'm saying if Pence could have kept the election from being certified, could any vice president do that? So that we well, it has to be the same circumstances. I'm not informed enough on the details. Okay. All I know is that, or on the law, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I know that according to the Pence Constitution... Obama Clinton should be executed in the public square. For everybody to see. Are you yep. okay being on camera? Against humanity yep. and against great God bless you. Yeah, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Military tribunal. Pitch firing squad. Any chance you want to explain Almost why? Can we get a chance? Hey, Oh my gosh, wow. And uh, aren't you aware of what he's doing flying illegal aliens in? Aren't you aware of his international illegal business dealings? And you're asking me, would he be the legitimate president? Would he should already be in prison? The, the whole question is illeg illegitimate on its face. <laughs> uh, and they're uh, arresting American citizens for, uh, you know, I could get arrested for this, execute pets. You know, I could get arrested for this, I bet, you, I bet you could. It was interesting. I kind of had to back off because at the end there, he started getting actually pretty upset at me. Wow, could you think that was a legitimate election? So I was like, hey, hey, I'm just asking questions. And that was what I realized doing these interviews pretty quickly is the only way you're going to get any decent conversation going is to appear to be at least somewhat neutral or on their side. Anytime I posed questions that seemed like they were coming from a leftist perspective, people got pretty upset at me. And it kind of hurt my pride because in 
lot of the clips that I'm not gonna be able to show you, it's just minutes of me standing there having to nod along to them saying a bunch of stuff that I fundamentally disagree with. And I'm the type of person who, if someone says something that I disagree with, especially politically, even if it's at like a lovely dinner party, there's no need for you to argue with them. I'll just be like, for the record, I disagree and I would love to discuss that with you. And so having to just stand there and agree with everything they were saying to kind of get to the points that I wanted to get to was brutal. But on a serious note, it was very surreal because in the moment, I almost, you could see under my mask, I was like <laughs> nervous laughing, you know, but it actually is very, very bad that we have a big 30, 40% of the country, I'd like to think maybe 25%, but it's probably around 30% who are completely behind this guy and have been convinced that murder is a justified action because of a lie that Trump has been spreading. I mean, you saw it there, they were bonding over the idea of murdering Mike Pence. Obama, Clinton. I mean, we literally have gotten to a place in this country where the followers of one politician are openly hoping and calling for the murder of individuals they disagree with politically. Please, if you're someone who maybe isn't all the way on board with the guy in that last clip, but generally believes a lot of the things that Trump says, believes the election's stolen, et cetera, et cetera, I really wanna ask you, do you wanna be a part of this movement, a movement that is calling for murdering public officials because they didn't do what the Lord Emperor wanted and denying the democratic will of the people. Is this the movement you wanna be a part of? I'm really asking you because that is what you're associated with is people calling for murders. Please, 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 MAGA people who aren't that guy, snap out of it. And I know that's not an effective way to change people's minds, but at least be open to what I'm saying. Keep watching these videos because I, on my end, am gonna break my back to keep addressing the arguments you're making, keep hearing the voices of the right, even when I would say most of the left and most progressives have given up on trying to change MAGA's mind, have given up on the right, and just are gonna try to fight them and win which I totally understand, but for some reason I feel called to try my absolute best to move some people over and bring them, even if it's a slow process, over to the positions that will allow us to make positive change and create the country that we want. One that has true justice, that pays you the wage that you deserve. One that doesn't crush you in medical debt just because you had to go to the hospital once. Doesn't crush you in college debt because you tried to get a higher education. I mean, these are things we can actually do if we had a unified block of people who were willing to fight for these moral issues, we can make the country so much better. But right now we're wasting time talking about Eminem's clothing and CRT and all this unjustified fear about individuals who wanna identify as a different gender than what they were assigned at birth. I mean, there's all these things that the right-wing media is trying to distract you with. All right, and I wanna stop the music. I know I've been doing this, but I just want you guys to be able to hear me in an unscripted form sometimes and really absorb what I'm saying. If you watch right-wing media, and by that I mean Fox News, YouTube people, uh, Ben Shapiro, please ask yourself, or if you know someone who watches right-wing media, ask them this question. How often are they talking about policy? Okay, because if you watch left-wing media, you might disagree with what they're saying, but they'll bring up once in a while, Medicare for all, $15 minimum wage, the fact that college is too expensive, and we should address that. And then based on those things that they address, that's why they'll make certain statements about different politicians, why we like or dislike certain politicians is because they don't support the policies that we support. But I beg you, if you watch right-wing media, how often are they talking about policy? Really watch it. You might say they talk about it. No, no, no. From now on, pay attention. How often are they addressing things that the politicians they're trying to influence or they support could actually affect? And then how often are they talking about completely unimportant most of the time, social issues. Some of them are important, like for example, they love going after, in my opinion, trans people. And the topic of trans rights is very important, but the issues they go after within that are not important. And at least they definitely do not affect the everyday person on a daily basis. Whereas healthcare costs definitely do. And they don't want to talk about that because they support the politicians who want to allow you to be bankrupted by your healthcare bill, your, uh, yeah, medical bills. So I ask you and I beg you when you're watching right-wing media, just take note. How often is it social issues? Just the culture war of the day? And then how often is it meaningful policy discussions? And that'll tell you everything you need to know about the media influencers 
that you respect and love. And so that's what I was struck by at this rally was all of these Trump supporters who cared so much and were so concerned about these issues that really don't affect your day-to-day -day life. And it's sad because that's the exact objective of these media figures is to distract you from the issues that are really important. Because if you really thought about a lot of these issues, you would slide to the left, I hate to say it. And of course that previous statement is oversimplified because there are real debates to have among policy, you know, where should taxes be? Uh, is universal healthcare even possible? It is, but there's a discussion to be had, but we're not gonna have them if we're stuck talking about the sexiness of the clothes that an M&M is wearing in the commercials. So I will definitely do my best to take a policy related issue and try to prove to you why the progressive position is the correct one. But first, I just need you to set aside a lot of these culture issues that they try to distract you with. Please do your best to do that, I beg you. So I know we're far removed now from the actual videos, but that was the Trump rally. It was a very interesting experience being on the ground and very concerning to say the least. Here's what else you need to know today. Donald Trump has begun rhetorically dangling the possibility of pardoning January 6th criminals if he is to get back in the White House in 2024. 3,000 US troops are being deployed to Eastern Europe in response to the growing tensions between Russia, Ukraine, and the West. Whoopi Goldberg is taking a two-week leave from ABC's The View after she said the Holocaust wasn't about race, but simply the evil of humanity. And finally, president of CNN has resigned after not disclosing a romantic relationship with the senior executive at CNN. Be well, everybody.